Bismillah Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah My dear beautiful people Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah I wanted to do a pep talk about divorce And speak about these issues And then I figured that hang on here Before going to the scissors Why don't I follow the same concept As Allah wa ta'ala did with Adam Before forbidding him from the tree He gave him all paradise to eat from So let's take that route Let's see how we can first of all enjoy a beautiful marriage. I will be here spitballing and thinking ideally what is that I believe personally Abdul Salam Abu Hanifa. If I had to craft my marriage, if I had to make it look the best, children or not children, what would I have in that menu? Well, first of all, a woman that wouldn't wear hijab at home. Yes, when the time of Salat comes in, you wear hijab, my sister. When the, hijab, when the Salat is gone, why keep that hijab on you? This is not an act of worship, remember? Rasulullah says, When he looks at her, she pleases him. She pleases his eyesight. Well, I would love a woman that dresses nicely for me. And for me here, my brother, put yourself and my sister in reverse roles. Yeah, looking good. And you know what? If my children are asleep, what is the problem in my life in my wife wearing a miniskirt for her husband after all we get challenged and bombarded every single day by little cuties in the street and we do our utmost job at keeping our eyesight away from them and sometimes looking into the sky is more better for us than looking to the floor because sometimes looking up in the sky is safer than looking down Especially when mini skirts are involved and maxi dresses open on the side and the way they walk and the way they wiggle. So yes, looking at my wife at home in the most beautiful of her attires is something pleasing to the eyes. Alhamdulillah, you have the internet. Why don't you guys take a shopping together and see what kind of dresses he likes? If you are trapped in your culture, well, go with that if that is what makes his boat rock. If anything else, Look at what your husband likes to see you wear. Don't wear dresses that are convenient to you. There is also a right. A lot of marriages go down south to the South Pole because somewhere somebody became complacent. Somebody became comfortable in the comfort zone. You know what? I can't see myself bothered to make myself up for my husband, you know? Well, he'll have to accept me the way I am. Wrong. We live in a competitor world out there. Every female out there competes against you. So when he comes home and he see a miserable wife dressed up in hijab or in some uh, old clothing or something that doesn't match or something like that, where do you think the dude is gonna feel? He's gonna feel the poor guy, he is deprived from all sorts of bliss. So the first thing for you, my sister, dress nice for your husband. Make it an effort. In Tafsir ibn Kathir, one day a man walked inside and he saw Abdullah ibn Abbas combing his hair with olive oil and perfume and making himself looking beautiful, blackening his eyes with the mascara and all that kind of stuff. And the man looks at Abdullah ibn Abbas petrified and he goes, what are you doing? Here is culture talking. Abdullah ibn Abbas says, beautify myself for my woman. And the man says, I am not leaving home until you tell me where did you get that? And look at the culture, how strong it is. Abdullah ibn Abbas turns to him and he goes, Allah says in the Quran, And to them, that is equal what is required of them, as it is known. And he goes, because I want my woman to look beautiful for me. Well, guess what? I gotta look beautiful for her. This is also for the gents, but I'll talk about that later on. But I'm talking here about what it is for me as a man, if I wanted to draw my perfect marriage, what it is I want in it. So I come home, the kids are around and they're playing, jumping up and down. Yes, there is that element of okay, but we have to make a time for the kids, bed at eight o'clock. So that from eight o'clock until 11 o'clock, this is my time with me and my wife. A lot of people make the mistake when they get married, they get into the production machine, make babies. And it's a horrible thing to do, really horrible. A lot of couples don't have history together, they don't, they don't have good memories. They don't have something called, let's remember the good old days. 
All they know is we got married. The marriage started with trouble, with expenses to feed a culture so that we look good in the eyes of people. So that our neighbors, people who know us, they go, wow, a delicate lead. These guys had the most awesome. The party was awesome. And to start the marriage with what? Debt. A lot of couples start their lifelong together with misery. The man doesn't have a house. The woman lives with his parents. Female with female, they don't care. They will get on each other's case. And the woman will be scarred only for years to always remember those very early days when people say honeymoon. But in fact, she didn't have a honeymoon. She had a scorching onion life. Let me tell you where this concept of the honeymoon come from, my sisters. And it's easy, Allahi, it's easy to keep it in a marriage. You don't honeymoon for a month, you can honeymoon for a lifetime. This concept of the honeymoon came from the Vikings. The Vikings had this ill belief that when the moon is full, our energy is at its top at that time there, but there is a truth in what they say. The god, the moon, will give superpowers, sexual superpowers, and honey would make you into a beast. And that's why they always honeymoon. When the moon is full, they eat lots of honey and they get married in the middle of the month. And they consume the marriage in those days where the moon is full. That was their concept. However, they made a study these days of the effect of the moon on our psyche, on our mind, on our who we are. And subhanAllah, they found that Allah Taala has caused the moon when it's full to activate our desires. So... We Muslims, we don't need to honeymoon for a month, go enjoy again, get more in debts, and then come home and start striving and working hard to pay the debts. Kids go back to bed at 8 o'clock, and then this is our time, me and you. We can play a game, we can read a book, and we can sit, and we can talk, and we can pillow fight, and we can camp. When was the last time you dressed a camp in the lounge wherever you are and you sleep in there? I've done it. It's beautiful. My brothers and my sisters, especially my sisters. If your marriage is stale, and it's getting nowhere. It's just like food that has been kept out of the refrigerator. It's getting rotten. Bacteria will come and live with you and your husband. Intimacy comes once a week and then once a month and then once a six months and then once a year. And the body starts building resistance. The only time we are intimate is to make babies production machine or completely unavoidable due to strong urges and intimacy becomes something in response like a fire brigade or a police emergency or an ambulance it never is triggered for its sake it always is in response because it's a need now my brothers and my sisters it shouldn't be the case it must be something done for its purpose try it try it stop making babies Enjoy the moment, the precious moment together. There is a lot that you guys are missing. What I'm trying to get here is that as much as we all want to be pious, but Islam never came. Having intimate time and having a close relationship with your wife or your husband was never against taqwa. Today I choose to be single because being with a Muslim woman gives me headaches. And you try to get to know somebody. And they tell you, I have found God. And I look at them, really? Is this, is this what it is your concept of a marriage? Found God? Oh, I want to do my prayers. Oh, really? Sometimes on these matrimonial websites, you get really scratchy. Some of them lie about their age from 56 to 46. The other ones, they are too pious and suddenly half an inch becomes a do or break in marriage. And it goes, subhanAllah, where are we going Muslims with this? So my brothers and my sisters, if your marriage is getting lower, my sisters, I will point first at you. What are you doing to lure your husband? Every woman out there is luring us to approach and talk and chat her up. My sisters, if your marriage has problems, I will point first at you, not the man. Because you have given the opportunity to the man to let you live with his parents. You have given the opportunity to the man to abuse you. You have given the opportunity to the man to belittle you. Stand up for yourself. Design your marriage. Don't just be victim to your marriage. Don't be victim to your circumstances. Don't be victim to culture. It's head blowing for me when I hear you guys your problems from both points, from the brothers and the sisters. 
I really think to myself, I don't want to get married again. If this is the quality of what it is today, I don't want to get married. I'm happy here looking at my Mac and prepare my pep talks and go run. And that's, I'm happy with that. So my brothers and my sisters, for the love of Allah, design your marriage. And here is a big secret for any guy out there. We men love creative women. There is a some element of lightness that must be in the couple. I find it very peculiar that they are always stuck for Allah and sins and we're gonna perish and we are doomed and we die in hellfire. Subhanallah, as if look at the end, Bukhari and Muslim. Umuna Aisha tells the stories about Rasulullah when he kisses her, he'll suck on her tongue. At cultural level, this is a calamity. But why would Allah allow that to be known to us? Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us know that Rasulullah eats with his wife and he pays attention to where she drinks from in the glass and then he takes and turns the glass and drinks exactly from where she drank? Why is that? Isn't that to build a beautiful romantic world? Why have we become slaves to culture, to routines? Wearing a hijab at home? <laughs> That is the worst thing a husband can experience at home. Unless that's your culture and unless he finds that really attractive. But to most of us men, hijab as the name indicates is to safeguard, is to guard. Please, please take care of your marriage, my sisters. So if I was to design my marriage again, I'd tell you this. I'd like a woman who would leave notes with secret messages. Send me Naughty messages, happy messages, good messages, loving messages. I would love a woman who is really tickly. She tickles me and I tickle her. And we fight with pillows. Why not have some water games with machine guns that spill water? Why not bring a cake and dump it on her head and let her... Why not have a nice bath together? Why? Why all these things are forbidden in the realm of Muslims? Why is the culture shackling us to death? Why? Why? I don't understand. Are we getting to a point where suddenly being single is far better than being with a partner? Allah says in the Quran, a second, a second is the serenity, calmness, peace. That's what you bring to the party. Man, man wants somebody who he can rely on emotionally. He wants somebody he can home to and put my head against her chest and she'll rub my hair and she'll tell me, sweetheart, how was your day? That's what I need. When was the last time you held your husband's head and told him, sweetheart, how was your day? When was the last time your husband came home from work or from whatever he is doing and you had prepared for him a very nice bath, candles, and you tell him tonight is your pampering night. No, it's haram in Islam. Don't do that. No, 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 no. Well, culture has got a way of twisting reality. When was the last time your husband was shopping or jogging or running, whatever, and you send him a text, I'd like to have a shower with you today. Is it forbidden in our religion, all these things? Well, guess what? Not. In fact, Islam encourages us, us, encourages to create this world where you become his world when he lives outside to bring the, his bread and when Allah does what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands him to do work. When he comes home, he comes home to a paradise on earth. He knows that at home awaits him a great divine gift. Not come home to a messed up house and kids still up at nine o'clock and the woman is all smelly, not bathed and looks like in regular ragged clothing and the hair is going east and west and there is a battle and she's grumpy, moody and touchy and uh, the food is on the table there and uh, sorry sweetheart, he never hears it again and she is all, okay, I'm gonna go to bed to you tomorrow. And that's all there is to it. So all I see of her is all this. And then when I come to the bedroom, I see a big lump of a head and toes. And that's the end of it. Is that what it's coming to? And then when problems hit, you go, oh, I'm making dua that Allah puts things right. What do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to send a hurain at home to keep things right? You are our hurain on this earth, ladies. You are the beauties on this earth and in the Jannah. And it is entirely how you can run the show.
So if I had to make my home, it'd be a woman I play with her table tennis or some kind of games. Go on and jog together. Wearing hijab doesn't stop me from working out with my wife. Become fitness aware people. We can do workouts together. We can go run together, play tennis together, play frisbee together. Why are we living in a small box called culture, called comfort zone, called headed towards a problem zone, called headed towards a routine about to die marriage? Why don't you guys take a hobby together? When was the, I never ever until now heard that a Muslim couple took a hobby together. Never. We split into different personalities. Subhanallah, subhanallah. If you want a great marriage, you gotta work at that great marriage. Who were you when you were a young girl? What dreams did you have? Think of that. It's always possible to revive that. The non-Muslims are having fun, and before them we should be the ones to have fun. It's just we have got something wrong, and culture took over, and comfort, and latency, and all that kind of stuff. This is like me sounding out and pep talking it out and maybe in all I've said, you're going to say, what a kind of loser. Or maybe in what I said, you say, that gentleman there said something I can bring in into my marriage. He said something that I can do tonight or maybe plan for it or maybe get my spouse and sit and talk about it. Maybe listen to this pep talk and get the good out of it and trust junk. That's what it is all about. See what works for you and go and do it. And what doesn't work for you, try it a couple more times. And if it doesn't work for you, look again for something better. And I pray to Allah to bless your day, your marriage, and make you all the proactive people at making a rekindling fire every day in your marriage. I would do that someday. And Allah knows more. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk. If you want to join my group, it's 078 Eight seven three five. You are never old. It's just the digits playing in your mind. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.